What is a mason? I am. Thank you, brother, for that kind introduction. My name is Jared, and I am a master mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the tie of our newly elected and installed Grandmaster Harold Norton. And his tie was done by none other than Edgar over at Masonic Revival. Now, if you're looking for something like our Grandmaster's tie, you're not going to be able to find that at Edgar's store. But you will find a whole lot more there than just ties. So check out Edgar at MasonicRevival.com. But don't forget to go over to WhatIsAMason.org as well. You're going to find some things there you can't find at Edgar's store, but were designed and made by Edgar. Brethren, we are still inside of the symbols that are being described in the third section of the Master Mason's degree as it goes here in Mississippi. And the next emblem up to be described is a beehive. Now, the beehive uh, has always interested me. Uh, I suppose maybe a better way to say that is it first interested me because I never actually saw it depicted around the lodge, at least not until I really looked for it. Uh, I noticed that the tops, the capitals, if you will, on the back of our chairs had an engraving that kind of looked like a beehive, like it was meant to be a skeep, if you're familiar with the uh, more traditional design of a beehive. So if you can imagine that on the top of a back of a chair on either side, that was kind of the only representation I am used to seeing in a lodge for a beehive. So that got me to thinking more about this beehive symbology. So let's start by getting into how the words are in Mississippi. In Mississippi, the beehive is described like this. The beehive is an emblem of industry and recommends the practice of that virtue to all created beings, from the highest seraph in heaven to the lowest reptile of the dust. It teaches us that as we came into the world rational and intelligent beings, so should we ever be industrious ones, never sitting down contented while our fellow creatures around us are in want, especially when it is our power to relieve them without inconvenience to ourselves. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear that recited in Lodge, if you blink, you miss it. It's a very short description. But one other thing that sort of came to mind was not just, well, where did I actually see this represented to me in Lodge? My thought, because I understood the nature of bees, was why in a fraternity where we are determined to stay male only, are we referencing a colony of bees that is by and large female? It just struck me as unusual. And so that got me to thinking more and more about the symbolism and trying not to confuse the symbol with the thing symbolized. And in doing that, it inevitably led to a paper. Uh, so here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to read you a paper that I wrote and hopefully it will convey some of the understanding that I took away from it and mean something to you. So uh, I'll recite it here and later on my website you can go look at it and see if it's uh, something that you'd like to share in your lodge. So here we are. Uh, it's called A Short Lesson from the Beehive. And anybody who knows me knows it's probably not all that short, but here we are. A short lesson from the beehive. In Freemasonry, many symbols and hieroglyphs are explained to the newly raised mason that are not typically found within the ceremony itself. These symbols may not even be found in our lodges, or, when perhaps represented in some way, lack any further explanation of the lessons behind that symbol save the paragraph or two presented in the lecture itself. One such symbol is the beehive. The beehive is a curious symbol for a fraternity. In a beehive, the term drone is synonymous with 
male bee. They do not harvest pollen, nectar, resin, or water. They do not make honey. They do not help in the process of cleaning the hive, nor are they even equipped with a stinger to assist in defending the hive from intruders despite their larger size. Yet they live there and eat the honey made by the tens of thousands of other bees in the hives. With this understanding of what a drone is, it is easy to see why, in various places, a candidate is told that if he performs the tasks he has agreed to, the lodge will be pleased that they have not received a drone into their hive. Despite these apparent failings, quote, Drones are essential to the health and survival of future honey bee colonies. End quote. So, what are we to learn from this symbol? For ages, Freemasonry has taught the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God. This provides a clue as to the use of this symbol, that of dependence on others. This drone depends on his kin to provide for his needs to uplift and support him throughout his life. Just as a child depends on others, we lean upon our friends and brothers throughout life, and just as we, no matter our age, depend upon deity. Throughout our adult life, we may find instances where we depend upon each other for our protection and security, food, and the other necessities of life. This dependence is not a failing, but a design of the great architect. Not only in the humbling of our egos to need such assistance, but in the uplifting of our soul when we are the ones who are able to provide it. This interdependence is the brotherhood of man and is one minute way in which we can curiously trace nature through her various windings and thereby discover the power, wisdom, and goodness of the grand artificer of the universe. If we delve further into the concealed recesses of this beehive, we can better understand the most common theme revolving around it, that of being a symbol of industry. Two simple words provide one definition of industry, hard work. It is indeed hard work to be a colony of bees. From birth to death, Every bee in the hive serves a purpose, and that purpose changes over time. The worker bee is not simply born into a single job, but rather assumes nearly every task within the hive at some point in her life. She progresses, if you like, in degrees. And, as with the origins of Freemasonry, there are just two major sects of her life, that of being a house bee and that of a field bee. Before a worker bee ever sees the sky, she is put to work cleaning, feeding, and caring for the others in the hive. She then begins to fly, build comb, handle the stores of materials collected by others, and guard the hive. Only after bearing all this burden is she then sent into the world to collect their needed supplies, like nectar and pollen, to scout out resources, or perhaps even a new home. Do you see the similarities to what we promote in our lodges? How a new entered apprentice is tasked to assist, being involved in nearly every aspect of the required upkeep of a lodge and its members while constantly learning new tasks? Then to eventually travel out into the world where he gains more knowledge that he brings back to the members of his lodge and, perhaps, potentially attracts the attention of others who, in time, he brings back to the lodge with him? We can note that the worker bee never stops working until it dies. From the moment it emerges until the moment it dies, it is engaged in some beneficial work. The worker bee performs the task, as we are taught, of being ever industrious, never sitting down contented. Are you so engaged in your task? But what about the drone? What purpose is it serving? 
In nature, the drone bee has but one task, to mate, which seems like an easy burden to bear until we learn that it dies upon doing so. But this task is more important than face value presents. The patterns of nature repeat themselves from the microscopic to the cosmic, and colonies of bees are no different. Just as each bee in a hive depends on each other, there is at least one way in which every individual colony depends on one another as well, and the connections are the drones. It is commonly held that a drone does not mate with his own queen. Instead, each colony produces males only for the purpose of mating with other queens. In nature, this provides the genetic diversity necessary to maintain the population as a whole, and not just the individual colony. Contrary to the lazy image given to a drone, a drone will spend his whole life finding a queen to mate with. When successful, the genetics this drone passes on will change the life of the hive of the queen he mated with and these genetics determine many factors of how efficiently and effectively a hive is run. In our lodges, this is the mason who is not content to only labor within the walls of his lodge, but who instead extends his lodge from earth to heaven and from the surface to the center. He discovers new concepts, learns new truths, and practices those virtues everywhere he travels. By action or word, he spreads the light he has gained and, inevitably, changes the lives of those individuals and lodges he has encountered. Are you ensuring that you only affect the lives of others in a positive way, even at the risk of detriment to yourself? In this way, the beehive should not be relegated to just a few words in a monitor. It is worthy of study, admiration, and emulation. It proves the wonderful properties of nature while demonstrating the more important truths of morality. We must remain constantly engaged, being industrious, and not shirking the hard work. We must inspire every member of our hive or our lodge to be involved in the work in some measure. One might ask, what happens to the drone who never finds a queen? Does he still serve some purpose? In short, no, he does not. The rest of the colony casts him aside for the benefit of the body as a whole. These are the drones we are typically referring to, and we must be willing to part ways and not harbor them within our hives ever extending our resources and weakening the colony. Yet, so long as that mason is making that effort to find the light for which he is searching, it is our divine duty to support and keep him. As we pray at the parting of a deceased brother, we must remain open to the light from deity because he will make every duty plain to us and fortify us by his spirit against the temptations that may assail against us. To find this light, we must observe the designs which he laid down, studying nature, of which we are a part, supporting one another and all humanity. Just as divinity ingrained this concept into the bees, he has written it upon us as well, if we will but take the time to notice. I don't know if I've ever actually read an article on my channel here before, but I hope that you enjoy that. I felt like I had already assessed the beehive internally to a point where just sitting here and talking wasn't going to be as beneficial as reciting the article that had already been written. So if you're interested in that article, uh, make sure you head over to whatisamason.org. You can find it listed there along with all the citations uh, that go along with it. Uh, that was an article that I didn't just 
Write for Fun that was submitted to our Lodge of Research uh, and duly accepted. So, any there, I hope you enjoyed it. Next, we will continue on our discussion of the symbols of the Master Mason's degree with discussing the Book of Constitutions that is guarded by the Tyler Sword and what kind of lessons that has for us to learn. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch, and thanks to our patrons who have been supporting the channel. We'll see you next time.